Welcome to hole number one of this Grand Parade Tournament with all these brand new pin positions on the Parc de Paris course. I think this is going to be awesome. Now, I'm doing a little investigation here on the first hole. You can see I switched from the EM to the big topper. I'm applying max topspin, and now we're switching to the Titan. The reason for that is I want that second bounce to be up in the rough exactly how it is. This shot works very well with Tailwind, and I recommend that if you've got a really bad crosswind or especially headwind, we are going to play on the right-hand side with either a quarterback or an extra mile and curl it over and just play a little more conservative technique. However, here, I think the average player these days is going to be interested in max top, second bounce, rough bump here, puts us in nice thorn range. On the right-hand side, you're more likely going to be in a long iron position, which is still very makeable, but this is a nice, desirable second shot. Now, I play this shot here with four and a half bars of backspin, one left spin, and I do adjust this one here for 10% minimum distance because we are right near that min line now i did push it up a little bit but this is rookie these winds are not insane and we have a beautiful tailwind to work with here so i come in here and i'm going to pull one ring for that for that wind that we have in this position now i think you guys are going to love this tournament i think these new hole positions are really good and even on one of the par feet par threes i found a tiny little funnel a little sticky spot uh, that seems to help me out quite a bit, and uh, I'm looking forward to showing you that as well. So subscribe to the channel, hit that thumbs up on the video, and let's crush this tournament. Hole number two is our first par three. Now, I'm playing this shot at 20% max, three bars of backspin, backbone eight, and a navigator. I set it up with that right of the yellow ring just on the rough line there, and that second bounce needs to be on the fringe. The thing about this shot is depending on the wind direction, now like any shot, I think that the elevation is going to fluctuate roughly between 20 to 30%. Because you're going to see here, I pulled at 20% there, but we're going to hit great left, which means it goes a little more in the direction we were pulling. So the true elevation for this shot would have been anywhere between 25 and 30%. I think the 20% max is absolutely the way to go, but we're going to have to play with this one. Good luck. Welcome to hole number three. Now, I am playing this one with the Zerk in all winds. It's a very long hole, and I do want to have a chance to get it there. The first example here, this is in mostly headwind, and this gives us a lot less to work with, so that's why I'm going to show you two ways to play this hole. The second shot is going to be, or the second example is going to be quite nice. This one here, I make a 10% max adjustment, max top, one bar of left spin to get this one right down the middle of the fairway. So as you can see, fine margins there. You want to make sure to hit perfect with the big topper each and every time. This one can be a bit of a, a bit of a troublemaker, if you know what I mean. So then into the wind for the second shot, I go with the 20% max adjustment here because the 10% just wasn't cutting it. I did have a lot more examples of headwind than I did of tailwind in practice, but you know, that's kind of how it goes sometimes, right? So 4.9 ring pull. You'll see then that when I set this one up, I did not give myself enough room to work with. And I, I'm trying to get it close here, you know. So I set back up, change it around. The idea for me is I want to have that spin through the pin. So the amount of spin that you're using until you get a very consistent drive is going to vary. But I decided to get it down here and give myself a nice setup there. So specific spin set is more so spin through the pin especially in headwind and I'll show you the tailwind example here in a minute so bumping and rolling it's a lot longer to get down to this new location and we still gave it a run for a very makeable eagle in headwind all right welcome to hole three once again now same setup here big topper four I got my zerk max top one bar of left spin and now, of course, having this tailwind and, you know, right to left tailwind, this is absolutely ideal wind for the drive. Uh, and you're going to see that second shot. Apparently, it's ideal wind for the second shot as well. No spoilers or anything. Simple shot here. No overpower. Do not hit anything other than perfect. That's a rule. That's a general rule. You should apply to everything, okay? So same idea down the middle, but instead of in that dark shadow, you'll see we're rolling it up to that light spot there, around 350 something, I think it is. Yeah, 352, then you know you're in a good position. So from 352 in the middle of the fairway, 
what I end up doing with the red ring on the right touching the rough at absolute maximum distance. I give this one two right and about 0.9 backspin. And I adjust here at actually 15, as you can see there, 15% max. So 5.2 ring pull is what we're looking for here. And hopefully it looks like it was executed decently well. Uh, this one, I was really not expecting to get this one to go, but spoiler alert, this is looking pretty hot. If you can get this to drop in the tournament, this is going to give you an absolute advantage over your competition because this is a tough one. And boy, oh boy, it helps to get those Albies, baby. So hit that pin, get that drop. We'll see you on number four. Hole number four, you're not going to believe how great this shot is. It's so straightforward. I end up giving it one top, one left, and we adjust this shot at 0% mid. This was my very first attempt practicing this hole. And I set up here with that yellow ring close to the bunker. And then I thought, ah, you know what? I don't think that feels very good. So let's change it and hit right in the middle of that of that rough there. So that's where the one top, one left comes in. We move it up a little bit. Got that ball guy just through the hole a couple of squares. And this one comes in very, very nicely. Just like that. Easy does it. Yeah, I couldn't believe it. I wasn't even recording yet. That's why I have to show you the replay because I thought, well, I'll give it a couple shots and then see how close we can come. And I think we can come very, very close. Park to Paris, even with new pin positions. I'm telling you, look, at this is easier. It's closer. It's makeable. Let's go. Hole number five is our second par four. Now, I'm picking up this big topper theme and kind of running with it here. We've got a max top, one right. Bring it up over this river. This is a decent little bit of a crosswind with a kind of bit of headwind to it. So that extra top spin is very helpful. However, please beware. This is probably the maximum top spin uh, because you're going to see here this shot comes very, very close to the rough at the end or to the sand at the end. Both are very much in place. So don't be afraid to take a bar or two off there. Don't also forget that I did give a little bit of curl here and I probably should have had this set up right down the middle of the fairway. We do not want to come so close to that left rough. However, the idea remains max top, one right down the fairway, and we set ourselves up for a second shot with the short iron. Now, depending on the club distance, you probably could bounce it over quite nicely there, but I found myself in between clubs, so decided to get a little bit more creative and use some backspin. This one, I ended up with anywhere, I'd say between six to seven back, 0 0.5 left, and I should have had this third bounce like just slightly before the cup, but 10% mid here with the short iron. And I think this is gonna be, it's gonna be very make. Well, you can see I've got the third bounce just past the pin. I probably should have had it like just in the front edge of the pin and this would have been absolutely money. There we go. Now, I think this is sad because we had a really nice funnel on this one here from the second tee and third tee. But uh, from rookie, it was never a massive funnel. But, oh, as you can see, we're right in the neighborhood. I'll see you on the next one. All right. So hole number six. This one, I'm starting off again with a big dopper. You could definitely use an extra mile here if you want. You're going to put yourself in a very similar position. So I go max top two left here and just make sure you got this one down the middle top left of that red ring just see it's just cutting into the rough a little bit 10 percent max is the adjustment we're going to use here and this is one of the holes where the pin position change has absolutely taken away our straightforward difficult but opportunity at an albatross now it's a bit of a disaster um i found us a cute little route that i don't believe is completely the end game result to get the albatross here i'm feeling like from the front tee this is just going to be a bit more of a challenge that power five ball with more backspin around the hole might actually be the answer but i thought this was looking like something we could definitely work with here so i got the sniper and try to rough bump from the left here it, even with the kingmaker you don't get enough side spin there so i move it over here to this kind of gap and the second you can see there's a little roll back at the back of the green and i kind of started to run out of time here but i feel like using two and a half back two left and it might actually need to be three back puts us in a pretty solid position here that ah, it's risky and ultimately if you don't like a rough bump just play it to the right and get this ball to the green get the eagle and get out of here this is not going to be the make or break hole i mean less than one percent of rookie players are going to be taking alpi here 
at this rate. But nice little shot. Hit that thin rough. Roll it on back. Not enough momentum there, but ah, we're within a square. We can work with it. Hole number seven here. This par four, I think, offers us a couple of really good options. The first one here is a conservative play. I got that quarterback in complete minimum distance into this headwind. Max back, max right. Now, be aware, if you have less than four bars of backspin here, this might not be a good enough option for you. You might need to actually play back into your wood club like a sniper and just play it down to this position by this last shadow. Because if you don't have enough backspin, you can definitely roll off the end there. So that's 10% max. Second shot, I'm coming at it with a long iron here. I've got a quasar ball. I recommended a navigator because I'm not really actually using any side spin here. Um, I'm looking at this from about 10% medium distance here with the Goliath, Backbone, whatever you're using, um, whatever happens to work best for you. This approach, I think, is going to be the type of thing that we have to spend a little bit more time with in the tournament and really sort of dial it in and get this wind angle and the amount of elevation situated. So that's a long wind away. I'm saying I don't drop this one, but I'm going to show you a drop on this hole right after, okay? So very close, though. Shows you the path, shows you the route, shows that we can get this one done. Okay, hole number seven once again, and it just so happens this hole isn't actually that long. And if you pop up to that extra mile situation and maybe bring a power five ball, a little bit here, even into a headwind, you'll see I end up using just about two to three bars of top spin, two bars of right spin here. And the idea is, is we're going to bounce directly on that second fairway and, you know, try to get this one in the hole. Now, even still, if you could leave yourself a simple putt for eagle, that's going to make this hole into a must eagle situation to get the banners in the tournament. So I make the adjustment here into this headwind and I'm just going to grip it and rip it. I'd say about three quarters of a ball of curl with max overpower here in this wind situation to take some practice shots okay that one was very close to the rough however a little bit of nice situation gets us on the green and gives us a chance to bring it home now this is a long putt and i normally wouldn't show you the putt because yeah i know you can putt but i just want you to see what this looks like from down here it is a bit spicy you know you want to pay attention to that and you want to make sure that you're ready for it so we'll see you over on hole number eight Hole number eight, and this is the sticky spot that I was talking about. This one, I'm actually recommending the navigator because you're going to see here that once I get up into position, I'm only going to use 3.5 bars of backspin with no side spin. So we might as well bring that wind value down. And, you know, this is going to be a great tournament, you guys. I love these new hole positions. I think that Playdemics come up with something really all around awesome here. And I hope you enjoy it, you know, so... Anyway, 3.5 back. I'm looking forward to it, man. It's going to be good. It's always fun. Get this game rolling, baby. Get that clean little 10% medium distance adjustment. And you just got to hit perfect. You see that little sticky spot? You see that little wiggle? Um, and I'm going to favor the left side of that. So don't forget to hit that thumbs up button. Subscribe to Airlick Gaming, guys. We'll see you in the tournament. Good luck. Hole number nine, final hole of the tournament. And for me, the new hole position here doesn't really change anything. I'm coming at it with a quarterback and a Titan ball, a bar atop, two bars of left spin here. And I'm setting it up around that plus five yard mark. And we're going to use a little bit of curl here just to keep it away from the bushes at the end of this fairway. So typically, this is just an eagle hole anyway for most rookie players because it is very, very long. And if we have headwind here, we're going to be looking at birdies all over the place. Get it up at the end here, and second shot, we're going to play it with a big dog. And you'll see that they have tucked this pin even further back into this large, far away green. And without max topspin here, I just don't think through those trees is going to be an option at all. You're going to get stuck up in the rough. Yeah, don't go there. The, the rough is too thick, so I, I it's going too long. It goes way up towards the green. I would actually stay to stick to this big open position that we've played in traditionally, uh, where there's a bit more of a gap through the trees as well, so your ball guy doesn't run any risk of clipping those trees, so you get a clean shot down into the rough that you could roll out to the green. This one here, I think, is really just about getting the eagle, which for me is not the most fun way to end a tournament. However, there is so many opportunities for drops here. If we can get this many practicing with, you know, just a little bit of luck, boy, it's going to be a good one. So I can't wait to see you. Thank you so much for watching. Good luck.